On behalf of the University of Strathclyde, I would like to welcome you to the Barony Hall for this congregation for the conferment of degrees. This is a day of celebration for you, our graduates, your families and friends, and the staff of the university. These events are sometimes known as commencement ceremonies, as a signal that they mark a beginning rather than the end. And it's in that spirit that we celebrate graduations in Strathclyde. In a few moments, it will be my privilege to cap each graduand. The capping ceremony has ancient roots as a public rite of passage and as a mark of achievement. For each of our graduands, it's a sign they are part of a proud tradition of world-changing scholars at Strathclyde, stretching back to the Scottish Enlightenment. Enjoy the ceremony. I declare this congregation open and invite Professor David Hillier to present our honorary graduate. My Lord and Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you Mr. Nabil Al Yusuf. Nabil has been described as a public servant, an investor, a businessman, an entrepreneur, an innovator, an educationalist, and a Strathclyde MBA graduate. In fact, he is all of these things and more. Nabil has had a high profile and illustrious career in the government of Dubai. As Director General of the Executive Office of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, he set up the Dubai School of Government in collaboration with the Kennedy School at Harvard University. The first of its kind in the region, the School of Government is a research and teaching institution focusing on effective public policy in the Arab world and aims to build future leaders through education, training and research. Nabil served as Executive President of the Dubai School of Government from 2005 to 2009 and later served as the school's Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees. Nabil led the development of the 2015 Dubai Strategic Plan, the guiding framework for the Emirates since 2007 setting out ambitious targets for Dubai's growth in the long term and acting as a driver for change in many of the Emirates industrial sectors. He also served as Coordinator General of the Dubai Government Excellence Programme, introducing the Key Performance Indicators System to Dubai, consequently reinforcing accountability in the public sector. Prior to his government roles, Nabil held key positions in the Dubai Islamic Bank and the Emirates Petroleum and Production Company. He is also currently chair of southern Iraqi property developer Sadara. As an exemplar for all of our graduates and consistent with the Strathclyde approach to government industry engagement, Nabil uses his business experience and expertise to its best advantage in nurturing new talent and harnessing the potential of his home region through both public and private collaboration. As an investor, Nabil currently chairs the healthcare and education-oriented private equity firm Al Jal Capital, which invests in entrepreneurial companies in the Middle East. In his role as chairman of Nabil Al Yusuf and Associates, he encourages the development of new venture creation and social impact programs in the UEE, something the university as a socially progressive institution is passionate about. And the bill advises on government relations, funding, connections, and capital. Nabil has a deep interest in education. As well as being a Strathclyde MBA graduate, Nabil has a BSc in industrial engineering from the University of Arizona, and a Master's in Operations Research from the Georgia Institute of Technology. Nabil established the Mohammed bin Rashid Programme for Leadership Development, developing future leaders in collaboration with universities worldwide, including INSEAD and London Business School. 
He himself was chosen as a young global leader by the World Economic Forum in 2010, a role which lasted until 2013. As Executive Dean of Strathclyde's Business School, I'm delighted to say Nabil is a member of the Faculty's International Advisory Board and has found time to support us at business school events in Dubai and as keynote speaker at the inaugural Dubai Strathclyde 100 event in 2013. All these roles connect and build together to accurately portray Nabil as someone whose career has revolved not only around creating new ventures and nurturing budding enterprises, but as someone who also promotes, both in what he says and in what he does, the importance of education. Nabil, you're an inspiration to each and every one of us at graduation today. And it is with great pleasure, therefore, my Lord and Chancellor, that with the authority of Senate, I ask you to confer upon Mr. Nabil Al Yusuf the degree of Doctor of Business Administration Honoris Causa. Lord Smith, Professor Hillier, fellow graduates, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to express my gratitude for awarding me the honorary degree of Doctor of Business Administration. I accept this degree with humility, joy, and pride. A former superior of mine gave me an advice on the first day that I worked with him. He said in our organization, feel free to dream and feel free to turn your dream into a reality. Although it was a brief sentence, it gave me a confidence to think beyond any borders and trust myself to achieve my dreams. I find that uh, often people are restricted in life by their own thinking and uh, they th set artificial boundaries to themselves, thinking that they cannot achieve certain things in life just because they're not good enough. However, when this glass ceiling is broken, they realize that there is an enormous potential waiting to be unleashed. My glass ceiling was lifted when I began studying for my MBA in 1998. I actually remember the process in which I chose uh, the university. I looked at options available for distance learning since I had a job and a family, and full-time studies was not an option. Strathclyde MBA stood out because, not only because of its ranking, but because I felt the quality of the program and its offering was unique. It focused on strategy, an area I was passionate about, and it developed skills that are every executive needs, such as negotiation skills. Strathclyde, uh, in addition, sorry, skip the page, go back. <laughs> Strathclyde was uh, the only MBA that has uh, this em emphasis. Other MBAs only focused on academic uh, learning. When I was about to graduate, from my MBA, I got a new job at an oil company through a fellow Strathclyde uh, MBA student, reminding me of the strength of networks and establishing long-term relationships with your fellow graduates. This was the beginning of a major change in my life. My MBA was a launch pad for my career. It led me to exciting and challenging uh, positions. I then joined the office of the ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. They were looking to recruit talent from the private sector who could break the mold of conventional government bureaucracy and lead the transformation of Dubai into a knowledge and service-based economy. 
In this office, I was lucky to be part of the development of a strategy for an entire nation. I led the team that developed the Dubai Strategy 2015. And uh, this strategy was a comprehensive one that focused on economic, social infrastructure, and uh, justice. And it involved many stakeholders, including ordinary citizens of Dubai. I also led the development uh, of or, or the change of the human resource law in Dubai. It was an old-style seniority-based system to a modern system that rewards merit and achievement. Uh, in this particular case, the HR course of the MBA came in very handy that day. In addition, in order to educate our top policymakers in the region, I led the team who created the Dubai School of Government. Finally, I led the team that created the Executive Council, which is the cabinet of Dubai. We oversaw the performance of uh, all government departments in Dubai, and we developed many uh, public policies in areas like economics, social, and health care. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to talk about my achievements. What I'm trying to say that the broad perspective that I was given by Strathclyde MBA helped me work on these diverse areas. We were taught a way of thinking which could be applied in all aspects of life. In 2009, I decided to leave my job and start my own business. I started a venture capital firm that focuses on developing entrepreneurs in our region. But perhaps the achievement that I hold dearest to my heart is the creation of Middle East Leadership Academy, MILA. MILA is a nonprofit organization that develops the next generation of business leaders in the Arab world. It connects them to each other, as well as similar networks around the world, to harness their collective powers. The reason why I'm so proud of Mila is that I have seen how it transformed people's lives and changed their perceptions about themselves and what they can achieve. Throughout my career, and especially with Mila, I learned that the true fulfillment and happiness comes when you touch other people's life and make a positive change in them. We humans tend to be the happiest when those who are around us find us to be source of joy. My fellow graduates, I'd like to congratulate, uh, congratulate each and every one of you for, on your achievement today. You have earned one of the best degrees in the world. You have earned your own la launch pad. I urge you to dream big and go out and turn your dream into reality. Thank you very much. My Lord and Chancellor, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Business Administration for research in the Department of Marketing, Fouad Mohamed Alami. <clears throat> for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, for research in the Department of Accounting and Finance, Arthur Krebers. <laughs> Stacey Lee McPhail Noble. <laughs> Athanasios Tsikaris. For research in the Department of Economics, Grant Jordan Allen. <laughs> Paul Smith. <laughs> 
For research in the Department of the Hunter Centre for Entrepreneurship, Dominic Michael Chalmers. For research in the Department of Management Science, Stuart McKinvin. For research in the Department of Marketing, Fatima Kawaf. <laughs> Graham James McLean. <laughs> Alexandra Metravelli. For the degree of Master of Philosophy for Research in the Department of Management Science, Ilya Mudrika Arini. <laughs> for the degree of Master of Science in Finance, Frederick Herman Ringo. An in investment in finance, To Chia Lee. <laughs> in applied economics, Ramanujan Upili. <laughs> in hospitality and tourism leadership, Yusuf Al Waga. Clinton Campbell. <laughs> Richard Ellison. <laughs> Craig Young Gardner. Beverly Dorothy Barbara Payne. <laughs> Joanne Taylor Stagg. <laughs> In operational research, Alistair Bennett. Edward Guy Ostler. In business analysis and consulting, Maria Sofia Anapliotti. Cosmin Emilian Diaconita. Maria Plamenova Ilieva. <laughs> Smaru Kalesidu. <laughs> Monko Chai Kosumnok. Elizabeth Ann McLeod. <laughs> Marvin Felix Mertens. <laughs> Olawali Tajuddin Olafari. Sergi Sergeyevich Aksinov Pomfrey. <laughs> Ludwig Teje Totime. <laughs> Jonathan Kenneth Wilcox.
For the degree of Master in International Business with Modern Languages, be Corimana Axel. <laughs> Catherine Hannah Clark. <laughs> Laura Clark. Ewan Dixon. <laughs> Katrina Ellen Forsyth. <laughs> Hannah Kate Campbell Girity. Rona Margaret McRae. <laughs> Emily McKay McQuaid. <laughs> Connor McGill. Jesper Nicholas Mount. <laughs> Catherine Helena Scott. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Business Economics, Robin Bhattacharya. Nicole Eden Koish. <laughs> Margaret Andre. <laughs> Paul Smiley. <laughs> Dennis Danov. In Business Economics and Business Enterprise, Robert David Jameson. In Economics, Kate Drea Blatena. Stella Nadja Fagan. Sam Kraus. <laughs> Ross McKenzie. <laughs> Stephen Francis Queen. <laughs> Cameron Torrens. Stuart Young. <laughs> Gregor Barry. <laughs> Matthew Robert Baxter. <laughs> Caitlin Brown. James Philip Caldwell. Cameron Andrew Graham. Lauren Elizabeth Grant.
Connor McManus. <laughs> Julius Matuzu Vicious. <laughs> Daniel Peter Owen. <laughs> Douglas Patterson Regan. Jennifer Seanad Taylor. <laughs> Matthew Thompson. <laughs> Hao Chan Jang. <laughs> Lauren Louise Fairley. In economics and business law, Safina Ahmed. In economics and finance, Jennifer Drennan Olson. Lorenas Petrauskas. James Kennedy. <laughs> Luke McGuire. <laughs> Rory Stanyer. <laughs> Ilza Stephen. David Cunningham. Cameron Graham. In economics and human resource management, Laura McGeekin. Patrick Woods. In economics and management, Jennifer Bett. Harriet Rose McBoyle. In economics and management science, Sibyl Katarina Sell. In economics and marketing, Vary Helen Mackay. David James Martin. In Human Resource Management and Marketing, Emma Stewart. In International Business with Business Enterprise, Ola Catherine Clark. Scott Litzer. Lewis Andrew McIntosh. <laughs> Emil Liebman Merold. <laughs> Michaela Joanne Kerr Stephen. <laughs> Elish Cockburn.
Siobhan Marie Conley. Emma Kerrigan. In international business with business technology, Gregor Frame. In international business with economics, Karina Cornish. Tonya Irene Mackay. Kirsten Allison Scott. Simona Zelyaskova Vasileva. Connor Craig. <laughs> Lucas Gunter Dieter Fanger. <laughs> James Gray. <laughs> Maxim Paul Christian. Razimbald. <laughs> Emma Naomi Strandberg. <laughs> Daniel McDonald. <laughs> In international business with finance, Borislav Ivanov Angelov. <laughs> Petko Bisarov Bonchev. <laughs> Scarlett Gordon. Reya Dimitrova Kordova. <laughs> Jintari Grigutaiti. <laughs> Matthew McClintock. In international business with hospitality and tourism management, Rebecca Wilson. In international business with human resource management, Mary Anina Aaltonen. Callum Jack Davidson. <laughs> Elie Savik Kaite. <laughs> In international business with management, Alexander Scott Neil Beckwith. Jennifer Greenshields. <laughs> Maria Hammerland. <laughs> Dylan John McPherson. Molly Helen Monroe. Adam Angus Falconer.
in International Business with Management Science, Dagmar Sophie Anderson. Lauren Avril McKinley. In International Business with Marketing, Thomas Tunnock Berger. Lorna McSween. Graham Robert Campbell. Laura Colford. Emma Louise Davidson. Janie Elizabeth Davidson. Joshua Gallagher. Alexandra Elizabeth Grant. Joanna Orphelia Lim. Alana McDowell. <laughs> Ross Mealy. <laughs> Diane Margaret Nicholson. Louise Parry. Rory Patterson. Emily Louise Pride. Jessica Riach. <laughs> Lauren K. Steele. <laughs> Rebecca Winsland. Alicia McElhaney. In International Business and Modern Languages, Claire Marie Conroy. Mark Duggan. Stuart McLean. <laughs> Patricia May McLennan. <laughs> Catherine Nicholson. Emma Jean Ross. <laughs> Caitlin Rush. <laughs> Kelly Ann Armour.
Verity Beckham. Caitlin Megan Brady. Kirsten Chalmers. Antonia Gallagher Connor. Laura Jane Grady. Rachel Ann Harper. Emma Jacqueline Harrison. Gemma Louise Hay. Laura Hopton. Katie Rachel Johnston. Fiona McGregor. Sophie Grace McManaman. Karen Moore. Rachel Laura Morrison. Christy Murphy. Parinas Razai Kodambandalu. <laughs> Louise Sinclair. <laughs> Zoe Totten. Elish Alexandra Young. <laughs> Jennifer Burnfield. <laughs> Michael Andres Febrero Smith. Daniel Mark Andrew McGowan. Jordana Mortimer. In international business with a modern language, Katie Hart. Liam Hendry. Thomas Joseph Bell. Rihanna Ferry. In marketing and economics, Matthew Lawrence Johnston. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Business Analysis and Consulting, Konstantinos Athanasiou.
uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, but most of all, our graduates. It's a real pleasure to welcome you here to the Barony Hall, one of the jewels in Strathclyde's crown. Now, rightly, our graduates have been center stage, and I'd like to begin my address today by congratulating you all once again uh, on your academic achievements. Your hard work has paid off, and it's now been recognized in front of families, friends, and indeed the staff who taught and supported you during your time here. We know just how much work you had to put in to get here today. As I was reading the coverage of the sad death of Muhammad Ali recently, I was struck by this quote, the fight is won or lost far away from witnesses, in the gym, out there on the road, long before I dance under these lights. There's a symmetry between success in sport and academic success. In both, only a few see the hard work required to triumph. Our gym is the library and the lab, the lecture theater and the tutorial. And today, under the lights of this magnificent venue, we celebrate your efforts and your achievements. In just a few minutes time, you'll be asked to join the academic procession as it makes its way down the aisle. This invitation symbolizes the fact you're no longer students, you're full members of the academic community of Strathclyde. And this is an important moment for you all. There's something special about being a member of a Strathclyde family, something special about belonging to a community of people who've come together in the pursuit of knowledge and of friendship. And I know that the memory of today will stay with you wherever you go and whatever you choose to do in life. We will keep in touch with you through our alumni and communications teams. And I would ask that you too, please keep in touch with us. We would love to hear about your achievements as you progress through your lives and careers. The advice and guidance given by our alumni helped to provide the first class education and student experience you all had at Strathclyde I now ask that you think of those who follow in your footsteps. You now possess the most valuable assets anyone can have in today's world. Knowledge, the ability to innovate, and the capacity to use your talents for the good of yourselves, your community, and the wider world. And as graduates from a socially progressive university, you have a competitive advantage, having been equipped with the skills, the know-how, and the life experiences to have a positive influence on and shape the world around you. You know, in Scotland, we are very fortunate in having a higher education system which is the envy of the world. Our country rightly invests in education for all, for the benefit of wider society. Education broadens the mind. It creates opportunities for individuals and for societies. And as Strathclyders, we carry a sense of duty to use what we've learned wisely and for the good of others. The desire to make a positive impact in the world comes naturally to graduates of this university. We've only got to look at the achievements of those who've gone before us for inspiration. To John Anderson, our founder, who established this university for the good of mankind. To George Birkbeck, who introduced free classes on mechanics for Glasgow's tradesmen to the world's first oil man, James Paraffin Young, to the missionary and explorer, David Livingston, to John Logie Baird and Lord Reith, whose work in television brought us visual marvels they could hardly have dreamed of. And in the present day, we look to Dame Elish Angiolini, a pioneer in Scottish justice as the country's first female solicitor general and later first female Lord Advocate, and to Sir Tom Hunter, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Scottish history and a philanthropist who's used his wealth to the great benefit of others around the world. Now, I'm sure you'll been given lots of advice on how to make the best of your lives. Some of that you will rightly ignore. Some might stick with you, but most of all, you're going to have to learn for yourself. 
Robert Louis Stevenson put it well when he said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. To reach this point in your lives today, each of you will have traveled a different journey. For some, the path may have been relatively easy, for others, more difficult. But I'm certain of one thing, none of you would be here today without the active support of your family and friends. They have picked you up when you've been down, they've encouraged you when you needed it, and they're here today to support you once again, proudly watching as you cross the stage with broad smiles and the odd tear in their eye. They are celebrating today not just because you're almost off the payroll, although that does come into it, <laughs> but because you carry, you carry their hopes and dreams, their confidence that you can make this a better world. For the past half hour or so, their applause has rung in your ears. I'd now like to invite our graduates to show their appreciation for the support of their family and friends. Now, I touched earlier on some of the key figures who've helped create the University of Strathclyde. You, know, you can tell a lot about the values of an organization by looking at its roots. Strathclyde traces its lineage back to 1796 when Anderson brought it into being, the only Scottish university founded in the Enlightenment and embodying Enlightenment principles of reason, tolerance and equality. Anderson believed in useful learning and his commitment to taking knowledge and using it for the greater good is the motivating force which gives Strathclyde its momentum today. It can be seen in our physics department, ranked first in the UK for research, which supported the international effort to discover gravitational waves, proving the final plank of Einstein's theory of relativity and opening entirely new areas of scientific study. It can be seen in our Centre for Excellence for Looked After Children, which this year received new funding from the Scottish Government to expand its vital child protection work and effect change for children and families. And it could be seen in the Business School, which has become the first in Scotland and only one of five in the UK to receive the Small Business Charter Gold Award, recognising its work in the forefront of entrepreneurship. And it can be seen in the £89 million Technology and Innovation Centre. The centre was formally opened by Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh last summer. And it's transforming the way academics collaborate with business, with industry and the public sector to bring global competitive advantage to Scotland. The Technology and Innovation Centre is a tangible sign of the university's commitment to world-class research and ensuring outcomes that have maximum benefit to society and the economy. And these represent just a small sample of the many innovative projects and initiatives led by our world-class academic and professional services colleagues who are taking new knowledge and using it to solve problems in industry and the classroom and in boardrooms. And I'm especially pleased that we're developing our campus to enable us to do even more. Our business school's flagship building has been transformed with a £23.2 million investment and will soon begin work on a teaching and learning hub and centre for sports and health, bringing our total expenditure on the estate to £600 million in this decade. So too has it been a year to celebrate for the faculty. Strathclyde became the first Scottish university to receive the prestigious Small Business Charter Gold Award, joining an elite group of institutions at the forefront of entrepreneurship in the UK. The university's business school is now one of only five in the UK to have the award upgraded from silver to gold, recognising its world-leading support for scaling up Scottish firms through innovation. The Small Business Charter, which brings together world-class business schools and SME communities across the UK, made the award following a rigorous assessment process. And student Camera Graham raised £160,000 to fund a tech startup which enables families and carers to store memories and interact with loved ones in care. 
Story E, a web-based platform, is designed to collate photos and videos from a host of sites, including Facebook, to enable users to log important memories and share them. It can be used in care homes or by home carers, and it allows users to add their own content, as well as giving those closest to them access to upload family snaps and videos. And student Chris Hughes has created the Present Pal app, a presentation support app, which will look to help increase the confidence and the grades of students with dyslexia and other learning difficulties. The company has been selected as winners of the Wildcard Awards run by entrepreneurship fund company Scottish Edge. Chris started the company in response to his own experience of dyslexia. That is why our graduates are so highly prized by companies looking to recruit the best talent to drive their business forward. That is why world-class companies like Rolls-Royce, GSK, Boeing are investing in Strathclyde. That is why we are leading research. We are leading research in energy in Scotland. Strathclyde punches above its weight across the board, as reflected in the two inspiring city awards we received this year, one for setting up Scotland's first children's university to encourage more young people to consider higher education, and one for the delivery of our technical and innovation centre. And our success is in no small part due to the collective talent, effort and commitment of our staff, the 3,400 colleagues who are pulling together to deliver one vision, a leading international technological university. Like me, they are very proud of your achievements. I know that the class of 2016 will demonstrate the power of useful learning. I know you'll make your dreams a reality. And I know you will make a difference to the world in which we all live. Thank you. I now declare close this congregation for the conferment of degrees. I would like to invite our graduates to join the academic procession. Would family and friends please stay behind until the procession has left the building and then please join us in the Lord Todd building for refreshments. Thank you. Thank you.